Nay, uncle, but you never came to see me before I fell in love. Why give that as a reason for not coming now? Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. We have never had any quarrel of which I am aware. But I have made my offer to you in the spirit of Christmas, and I shall keep my Christmas spirit to the last. You are watching Shaw Arts and Entertainment. I am your host, Curtis Anderson. This is Shaw Arts and Entertainment. It is the month of December. That means it's all Christmas, all the time. I'm joined by James O'Shea here at the Persephone Theater. It is the Christmas season as well here in Persephone Theater. They are bringing to the big stage a Christmas carol. How excited are you, sir? Oh, it's a Christmas carol. It's a classic. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys do this at your house, but we always watch it on the tape. The family gets together and you get the Alistair Sim one. And it's just, it's a classic. See, although it's got ghosts in it, which is not very Christmassy, unless you're a Tim Burtonite. Yeah. Then you like ghosts in everything. A Nightmare Before Christmas and all that. So yeah, we got ghosts. Yeah, we got, uh, and reeds. Lots of reeds with bows on them. It's great. I, I was sitting in the crowd watching a little snippet they give the media, the, the little secret advanced performance and it was like all oh, Ebenezer Scrooge doing this and that and it was all dramatic and then I got to interview you. You're not actually in the scene we saw so no. I'm jumping in here cold like usual. Yeah. What are you bringing to the table? Uh, I'm Bob Cratchit. You know ah. Bob Cratchit, the cringing little Cratchit who's <laughs> Ebenezer's... Um, uh, the shell-shocked guy. <laughs> that's right. Who's clinging to his job just for... and it's not even a very good paying job but it's better than no job at all and believe me you gotta have some cash coming in and that's very Christmassy, right? You gotta have some money otherwise you're spending more than you're taking in. So yeah, I'm Cratchit, uh, and then we got the Cratchit kids, uh, one of whom is, uh, two of whom are my own kids, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm hanging on for dear life and trying not to get the boss too riled up so that he fires me. That part, of course, made famous by Porky Pig back in the day, right? True. This has been done so many <laughs> times by so many companies, so many people. What do you guys do that makes it a little different or like is, can you even do anything that to make it a little different this time I don't I'm not sure that you have to the key to this is the transformation of one person into a human being and we were talking about this because there's these ghosts that come yeah you know, his old former business partner says man you got to snap out of it or else the yeah. afterlife is gonna be terrible so uh, he's like well he's that still doesn't do it the three ghosts don't do it I think what ultimately gets this one and, and makes this an interesting production Scrooge is the real ghost, because if you look at all the scenes, he can witness them, but he can't interact with any of the characters, right? He's going back in his own past, and he's even seeing uh, scenes from his Christmas present that he can't be involved in, yet he can see them. And that kind of makes him the ghost, and that you realize if that's what you're doing in your life, you're walking through your life sort of empty, kind of like, I wish, and it, it don't realize too late that you blew it. You might have, you know, maybe you made some money, maybe you made some friends, but if you missed the entire point, which was, mm -hmm be alive like you know and if you don't have to have a lot of money to help people just reach out to try mm -hmm. you know and I think that's the big message and I think that's what makes this such a classic play. Mm -hmm. Is the hardest part of your character being someone who's always reacting instead of acting because I know you're a really passionate guy like I asked you a bad question during the Godot interview and you pushed me over but in this one you're kind of <laughs> like you know you, you're, you're wincing little character is that hard to pull off? It is for me because yeah. I'm a oh, naturally yeah. gregarious you're a person guy. I, I, on occasion <laughs> but I do get to play four other characters right because oh, oh. it's a, this, so you don't have to dwell okay. on the negative right um, I'm also playing uh, who else uh, citizen number eight Ooh, which that's a good one. it's a lot of backstory yeah. to that one because yeah. you know he can never catch public transit <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I'm also playing a character from a storybook that young everybody, so I'm, that's Alibaba, so I had to do a lot of research on that. Um, Ali, that's right, I do, I, I juggle a great big uh, sword, so there's, there's some flourish, wow. that one's just fun, that yeah, one, and if imagine. anyone, you know, yeah. although I am fictional, so that's bad, mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I can only fictionally chop people in half. Uh, who else am I playing? Oh yes, a guy at a party named Topper, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, this one, I think a, most characters are playing uh, a number of uh, characters, so it's a lot of racing around backstage changing into someone else now. So uh, that takes your mind off that sort of cringing poor Cratchit. So sometimes it's a relief to go back to him. Like, yeah, my simple little life. And he's an accountant, a Dickensian accountant. He's so not a Hellraiser <laughs> like citizen number eight, right? No. Citizen number eight, get things done. He gets, he's, he's the law here. He's right. You had mentioned before that it's a Christmas tradition to sit down and watch this with your family. It yeah. was with my wife and I until we had a little boy who's, he's kind of sensitive to some of the scarier things. So okay. I haven't actually brought it up yet, sure, but yeah. that does 
does bring up my only two complaints about, well, this production in general. Yeah. It's given the name Ebenezer kind of a, a bad connotation. That was one of my top three names when our son was born. No way. Really? You can't name kids Ebenezer anymore. You can't. It's done. I just did a Google search on Ebenezer because I was like, is this one of those Dickensian, or Dickens yeah. names that he invented, you know, uh, that, that are sort of descriptive? But it turns out it is Hebrew. It's Old Testament. Um, and it means stone that gives help. Well, yeah. So, but... And then it says a graph of how popular this name has always been. <laughs> it's it's never been a popular name, and I think uh, largely to do with that. Uh, and I don't think Scrooge is a popular surname no. either, you yeah. know. It's a good nickname, but it's not a, not a good surname. So Ebenezer, it's got an awesome ring to it, great sound, but bad connotations. So I don't think it's going to catch on. Complaint the second. All right. Okay, you get the Ghost of Christmas Past, of course, which is all scary in the chains, and that makes sense. And that's yeah. a little scarring to some of the younger yeah, viewers. Definitely, definitely. But then you hear about the Ghost of Christmas Present. And let me get, that got my hopes up. I was like, Christmas present? Everyone heck, likes Christmas presents. Sign me up for that, but that's not what that is. Nope. No, although he's a very <laughs> he's a very giving and happy, yeah. jolly guy, kind of like the green man in the, that sort of mythology. Um, yeah, what can I tell you? This story is filled with ghosts. There's no yeah. getting around it. And if you go back to uh, Dickinson's original book, uh, it's a kind of a scary <laughs> book. There are lots of ghosts coming at you, so uh, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? But I think it's nice. If there's too much um, sugar at Christmas, it just gets too sugary. So you want a little bit of, uh, well I don't know what the uh, you know complementary spice to sugar would be. Maybe spice? Yeah. Ghosts are more spicy. You've been waiting five minutes to drop that line, hadn't I know, you? I just you, you were rehearsing that in the hallway before the camera started rolling. There it is, a Christmas carol right here at the Persephone. Great way to help ease yourself, ease your mood into the Christmas season. That's right. And you know, when your family comes over, sometimes it is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not yeah. always ghosts. But I know. Sometimes. I know. Lots of chains, though. I know. Fear. Thank you so much, sir. Cheers. Thanks, Curtis. Everyone in Saskatoon should come see this. Everyone. Like Everyone. It. You, 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 you. That guy over there on the couch. That come see it. Too? Yeah, yeah him not? too. Bring him. Yeah. We like him. What shall we put you down for? Nothing. <laughs> you wish to remain anonymous. I wish to be left alone. <laughs>